Hi kids, today we are going to have a little talk about how we measure volume um, of sounds. Now first of all, it's really important that you understand the difference between frequency and volume. Frequency is how high or low the note is. If you're a singer or a musician, it's what you call pitch. A note as opposed to the B, as opposed to the C, the high C, etc. The different keys on the piano. You know plenty of people who have low voices, you have plenty of people that have high voices, people can change their voices. That pitch is determined by the frequency of the sound wave. So you undoubtedly can imagine singing a high note and then singing a low note. The high note will have a high frequency, that is there'll be more waves a second. The low note will have a lower frequency, less frequency, there'll be less waves per second. That's pitch. Volume is completely different. Volume is how loud or quiet the sound is. And in terms of the wave, it's determined by the amplitude of the wave. The bigger the amplitude, the louder the volume. The smaller the amplitude, the less loud or quieter the volume is. Probably somewhere at home you have an amplifier in your sound system here for your uh, music in your house. That amplifier doesn't change the pitch of music you listen to, it just makes it louder or quieter. Think of it as the volume knob on your radio in your car. If you play an electric guitar, you've undoubtedly plugged the guitar into an amp, short for amplifier. The amplifier makes the sound louder than it would be otherwise. That's what an amplifier does. It makes things louder. So amplitude of a wave is about loudness, whereas the frequency determines the pitch. Now, in terms of actually measuring the volume, the first thing you need to understand is something called sound intensity. This is uh, represented by the letter capital I, and sound intensity is a measure of how much sound energy is a certain distance from the source. However, we don't measure it in joules, we actually measure it in watts, per meter squared. So intensity is in watts per meter squared. Remember a watt measures power. And remember power is how much energy is transformed from one type of energy to another per second. Well in this case we're talking about sound energy being transmitted and that sound energy um, is measured a certain distance away from the sound source. And it turns out that sound intensity decreases by the square of the distance from the source. So sound intensity is going to be measured in watts per meter squared. Sound intensity is just something to be measured by a machine. In the 1920s and 30s, Alexander Graham Bell, when he was trying to figure out things about helping deaf people, did lots of studies on humans, and he came up with a different sound measuring scale that's purely based on humans' ability to hear sound. And that scale is called sound level. And sound level is measured in decibels. Now humans aren't actually very good at hearing. So many other species, dogs for example, are much better at hearing both louder and quieter noises, mainly quieter noises, and much more frequencies than humans can. So the sound intensity is not human relative at all, but the sound level measured in decibels is a human relative scale showing how sounds are perceived by humans. Now there are two equations for each of these things. I'll write them down. After you see them, I want you to pause and write these down yourself so that you have them carefully written down as well as recording what every one of the symbols means. Then I'll give you some explanation and some sample problems. Okay, so sound intensity, I, is the power of the sound, that'll be measured in watts, divided by 4 pi r squared. Only the r is squared. The r is the distance from the sound source to where you're measuring the sound. So, for example, if Miss DeTori was standing on the field yelling, 
we would be able to say she has a certain amount of power in her voice. And then if you were a certain distance away, say maybe 10 meters away from her, and we wanted to determine the intensity of her sound at the location where you are standing, R would be 10 meters. So we would square the R, but not the 4 pi. The units for that will be watts per meter squared, because 4 pi doesn't have any units. Sound level, level, on the other hand, is measured in decibels. Sound level is measured with a, uh, the symbol is a beta, that B with a little curly tail on the bottom, and sound level is 10 dB, that's 10 decibels, times the log of I divided by I naught. Now log is a function on your calculator. If you look at your calculator, just to the left of the 7 button, it says LOG. That button is a log function. If you've never done that in math, I'll teach it to you next class. What we're taking the log of is I, the sound intensity, which you found in the previous equation, divided by a constant, which is, given the label I0, I'll always give you this constant. It's 1 times 10 to the negative 12th watts per meter squared. And according to uh, Alexander Graham Bell, he thought that, that number, 1 times 10 to the negative 12th watts per meter squared, was the smallest possible sound that a human could detect. In fact, no hum human can actually detect that. But his theory was to make a scale where zero was the smallest possible sound, and things went up from there. It turns out that uh, the decibel scale works pretty much in the way that nobody can hear something less than 20 decibels. A few people can, but not many. A sort of a, a whisper, a very, very quiet sound would be sort of 20 to 30, maybe 35 decibels. A normal quiet conversation with a friend or two would be in the neighborhood of 40 to 45 decibels. And if you're talking in front of a big group of people, you may talk more like 50, 55 decibels. I've measured myself a couple times. My normal speaking, teaching voice is just under 60 decibels. Then things get louder from there. Um, for example, OSHA, the Occupation and Safety Administration that governs workplace safety, says that any time you're working somewhere where there's a noise louder than 90 decimals, you have to wear earphones or earplugs to protect your ears. You may have noticed that when you're in an airplane, the people work out in the tarmac loading and unloading the luggage always have big ear muffs on. Essentially, they're big pads protecting their ears from loud noises. Rock concerts are often in the 110, 120 decibel range. That just gives you a sense of that's very loud and it could damage your ears if you listen to it too long at that volume. Okay, we're now going to do a problem to show you how this works. And the question is, what is the sound intensity and sound level if you are 6 meters from a 12 watt source? Okay, so this is actually going to be two parts. You're first going to find the sound intensity, then you're going to take that intensity and you're going to plug it into the equation for the sound level. So, as I wrote just a minute ago, the equation for sound intensity is I equals P over 4 pi R squared. Here, P equals 15 watts, and R equals 6 meters. So we're going to say I equals 15 watts divided by 4 pi times 6 meters squared. So get out your calculator and see what you get. Okay, when I plug that in my calculator, I got 0 0.000, 0, I'm sorry, 0 0.033157 watts per meter squared, which I'm going to round off to 0 0.033. If you didn't get that, make sure that you actually put the bottom all in one big set of parentheses. That is, you need to make sure you're dividing by 4 pi and you're dividing by 6 squared. Remember that if you did 15 divided by 4 pi multiplied by 6 squared, the way your calculator is going to do is take 15 div divided by 4 pi, but then it's going to multiply that answer by 6 squared. 
So make sure you've got parentheses in there. So this is the answer to our sound intensity. Now to find sound level, we're going to use this equation. Beta equals 10 dB, which is really just a constant, times the log. The log is a mathematical operation. And we're going to take the log of 0 0.00, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 33 watts per meter squared divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter squared. So that's what we're going to take the log of. Okay, so let's now go to a calculator and see how to take the log of this number. So we're going to do that by doing the following thing. Here is okay. So here is how I did all that in my calculator. I took the, I figured out first what was 0 0.033 divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 12. And you see that gives me 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 10. Notice I used the capital E button on the calculator, that is the second and the comma button, to get this capital E, meaning exponent, to the negative 12. Then, since I had 3.3 .3 as my answer to what I'm taking the log of, I hit the log button, and I called up my answer from the previous line. I did that by hitting the second button, and then hitting the answer button, which is right down here. That is, if you hit the second button, right there, and the answer button, you bring down the number from your previous line. I wanted to take the log of that, so I did the log of that, that gives me 10.518. I actually want to multiply that number by 10, because if you remember the equation is 10 decibels times the log of I over I naught. 10 times 10.5185 is 105.185. So I'm going to round this off and call my answer 105.2 decibels. That is, once again, I first took the log of this, that is 0 0.033 watts per meter squared, divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 12th watts per meter squared. Notice your watts per meter squared will cross out. I found out what that number is in the calculator. It turns out it's 3.3 .3 times 10 to the second, 10 to the 10th. No units. I take the log of that, and it gives me 10.518. I then multiply that number by 10, and I get 105, I'm going to round it off to 105.2 decibels. So that is the sound level. That is how humans would perceive that sound.